Amazon delivery service partners are hiring full-time delivery drivers to meet growing customer demand. Receive compensation of at least $20 per hour at select stations, plus benefits and a sign-on bonus of $1,000 from participating DSPs if you apply now. No delivery experience required. Must be 21 years or older. Terms apply. Apply today at Amazon.com forward slash driver. That's Amazon.com forward slash driver. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code GET100. That's code GET100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. This is your weekly sports fix with Sticks. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Sports Fix with Sticks and the one and only anonymous big homie. Who is that guy? Oh, I'm going to get to you in one minute, brother. I found him. I found the anonymous big (laughs) homie. He was playing Where's Waldo for the last month, but we'll get into that. We'll get into that in one second. All right, big homie? Let's go. Hey, shout out and thanks to Trey Henderson for uh, coming on last week. Follow him on Twitter at TreyHindu24. And talking some, we talked some baseball, and he brought, he talked about this foundation. So go to alwayshavingfunfoundation.org to find out more about this tremendous foundation Trent and his wife started in honor of, Trent and his wife Danny started in honor of Trent's dad. Can't forget about her, the glue yes, that sir. holds everything together. Oh, uh, yeah. And definitely, if anybody wants to uh, play a little golf on July 31st, it goes to, uh, the always having fun foundation.org and it's a fun tournament. So like I said, Hindu golf classic, July 31st, go to always having fun foundation.org and get your team fired up. And as always suckas, don't forget to subscribe, rate and review the show. Go to this funner.com for more podcasts and online content. Gotta Grab do some merch while you're Gotta there from the funner family. We, are working on some uh, some other gear, some other colors for you all, because I know everybody's mm-hmm. been asking about some different colors in the shirts other than white. We're working on it. Chris, the producer, has it all taken care of. Uh, with the 7 billion other things he's doing, he's going to take care of this for us here sometime in the future, so stay tuned for that. Follow me on Twitter at Stick015, and follow this guy, the announced big homie, at homie underscore anonymous. Use the hashtag sticks and sports to join the conversation, ask us questions, get us riled up, whatever you want to do. We got you. And like I said, I found the anonymous big homie. I didn't have to go run the streets of Fed way, not track him down in his where's Waldo shirt. How you doing, my man? A whole lot damn better, man. I Where can't you believe been, dog. Man, I can't believe you ain't snitched and told the whole world my business and all of that. I'm surprised, dog. I'll tell you, that shows what type of homie you is right there. You, you know, I, hey, I ain't put no Anonymous Big Homie's business out there without the verification from the man himself, Anonymous Big Homie. It's hard, dog, because you know how much I love you and how much I care about you and everything that's going on in the world. So That's right, man. Pe- well, People have it. Yeah, man. Well, should I mean some some know and some know. I I got some uh, reasons for being in the house for the last year. You know what I mean? Some whole other shit going on, right? So you know, yeah, I'm doing doing my thing, trying to stay away from the populace as much as possible, man. So you wouldn't believe, man. The motherfucking damn COVID came, knocked on my door. Man, he didn't knock on the door, kicked the damn door down. <laughs> he did. 
it kicked the damn door down and was like, no, where you at? Where you at? No, 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 no. You got to get this. You getting this. No, I'm going to serve it up for you on one of the little silver joints with the with the dome over it. And it just revealed, like, here, man, bro. That, shit, that damn thing got the whole house, G. Damn, the son. The whole house, bro. The whole house. Okay, now. Well, now, when I say the whole house, that just means everybody tested positive. That's all that is. Okay. But ask the kids if they had it. They don't know no damn thing. They over here hitting backflips, doing a damn moonwalk, bro. And the latest TikTok, this, they, you, they wouldn't know a damn thing. They over here. We're like, what the hell is wrong with them, man? We doubled over. Okay. I'm talking about serious. Now, I want everybody to know this is serious PSA for COVID, man. This, this damn thing is not a joke at all period if you don't die you about two three inches away from wishing you was okay because the craziest thing now we didn't have no respiratory issues we had a little bit of coughing here and there but the worst thing man was it makes your body feel dead like dead like as cold as you ever think you could be and you want to pile up with robes and blankets and all that, you end up doing it. And you still ain't getting warm enough. And three minutes after that, three minutes after that, your ass is on fire. You can't take off enough stuff. So it's this crazy, crazy feeling, man. Uh, And for me, the worst thing, man, the worst thing, about the whole damn thing. I couldn't taste the damn thing. And that, for me, to not be able to eat or not want to eat was wild, bro. I lost 15 pounds, G. Damn, son, for real? 15 pounds in two weeks. And it was just the easiest 15 pounds you ever seen in your life. I didn't want Cause you nothing. Because you weren't eating it shit, huh? Dude, I didn't want nothing. I didn't get right. It, it was a struggle just to eat the little, uh, the little mini oranges, bro. It was just like I gotta eat something, and uh, but it was wild, man. Uh, M, she's cool, man. She she still got like a, re- a little residual <laughs> every now and again, but yeah, you know, we pretty much back to normal, man. But th- man, I'm trying to tell people, man, <laughs> and all the precautions that I take, you know, what I'm saying for for, for real, else, you've been you've been in the house for a year, dog. I know that. That shit came to my doorstep like an Amazon package, and we just <laughs> and we just brought it right on in here. And uh, yeah, it's serious, man. So everybody, man, if you if if you you know on the vaccination train, go do that because even Marcy, who is not a vaccination uh, person, you know, for her own reasons, uh, she's like, yeah, I'm about to get vaccinated because I don't ever want that again, ever. Wow. So go do that. And then continue to take all of the, you know what I mean, coverage precautions and distance precautions and whatnot uh, that you feel comfortable with. Because, like I said, we still hear enough to say that we had it. And a lot of people can't say that, though. And um, so, yeah, man, uh, that's what that's where I was, man, sweating. <laughs> sweating and cold and, and, and feeling like I want to jump in a coffin someday with. Damn. Well, I'm glad you didn't, brother, because I'm glad to have you back. I'm glad you're safe and healthy and the whole family all safe and healthy. And you guys kicked COVID's ass and got that out of the way, dog, because you don't need that shit. You're good. All, all that shit I was talking about, all these coaches who were last football season who was testing, testing positive and was on the damn sideline uh, uh, the, next, the next day or the next game or what have you. You know, I, I, I think there's no way they had. They was, it was just, they, people was getting false positive. There's no way. Cause my brain was not even functional. I forgot about this too, bro. Remember I kept, I kept hitting you on the, uh, on the, on the private chat, man. Dude, I felt like I had lost 60 IQ points, bro. Like right. I couldn't could, focus, couldn't do shit. No focus. I couldn't think I couldn't, I, it was like, I didn't know where the hell I was walking in my own damn house. It was wild, man. It was the strangest fog and, uh, you know, M looked it up and she was like, yeah, people said they got a COVID fog or what have you. And that stuff was real, man. I felt like an idiot, G. Well, that's, damn. Well, like I said, brother, I'm glad you okay. I'm glad the family's okay. 
I'm glad to have you back. You look better. You sound better. Yeah, uh, man. You know, I know that a couple of times before you, you know, you were kind of not really feeling it. And that's not too, dog. I, I love the energy you bring and everything that, you know, uh, the hypeness and all that. And I could tell the energy was a little low a couple of times and then shit hit the fan and damn COVID came a knocking and dropping off the package or whatnot. Man. Well, I ain't even, I ain't even want to drink, bro. You believe that? <laughs> now, that's now, that's right. a, now that's something serious, man. When you get something that make me not want to enjoy the one vice I got in this world that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. I, man, I think I didn't had shit. I think she had some, she had some gin or something around here like uh, last weekend. That's the first piece of alcohol that tastes that, that touched my tongue in three weeks, man. I don't even want it. I ain't got no, that's, I ain't got no craving, which is crazy. I, I got, <laughs> that's funny because, uh, so you could taste now. You got your taste back. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's funny because back, you know, a year ago, we were having a conversation about uh, you and not leaving the house for a year. Mm-hmm. You were like, that one thing I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to give up or enjoy is that fine taste of some JD every once in a while or That's whatnot. Right. You know, right. and then you just went three weeks with barely even ha- having a sip in three weeks. That's probably why you lost that 15 pounds, too, homie. It, pro- it probably is. I'm telling you, it is. <laughs> man. It's, I'm telling you, it is because not eating nothing. And, you know, they, they always say, I always thought they were bullshitting with that, with, you know, drinking alcohol, it packs on the pounds. I, I don't know. I just think it's because you be at the bar and eating fucking mozzarella sticks and bullshit is why you gain Some weight. Wings. But, yeah. yeah, that's why you gain weight. But, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's wild, man. Still, I don't, I ain't went and, and bought a jug of nothing nice yet. And, and I think when I do finally get it, when it do finally say, you know what, this weekend is the weekend or what have you. Oh, it's going to be something good. <laughs> You're going to be something hey, all the, I'm gonna all go the all money out. you all the money you saved in the last uh, the last three weeks of not getting a bottle here and there, you guys get you just get the top shelf stuff this time, the, homie. The, the Pappy Van Winkle, some crazy. I'm going way past Uncle, way past Uncle Nearest, man. I don't know, Uncle but, Nearest, that dude. That's the man. Um, that's crazy. Um, well, like I said, brother, we back. You want to talk we about sports here. real quick? We out here. Let's go. Let's, man. We gotta get this thing go. back rolling. Hey, I gotta I, I have to hit excuse me. I have to hit on the UFC 261 from Saturday. Okay. Damn, what a freaking awesome fight card. I hope everybody tuned into that. The guru, Mark Sudich, my man, UFC uh podcast co-host with me there. What do you say? Him and I both went seven and two on the prelims and the main card seven wins two losses for y'all but real quick recap so hey make sure you follow our ufc podcast we ain't screwing around there either bro um we'll get you we're gonna get you in that though we're gonna get you going on that you know you you have all the stuff going on in in uh, the family household but we're gonna get you in get you into this uh ufc podcast too because i think you're gonna start to enjoy this a little bit but we'll just run through real quick the welterweight title by title bout between Camaro Nightmare Usman and Jorge Gamebred Masvidal ended like a lot of people thought it would in, in the second round TKO by Cameroon. The Nigerian Nightmare retains his welterweight belt. We have a new women's strawweight champion who regained her title. First woman to ever regain her title after losing it. Thug Rose Namajunas. Awesome fight, TKO in the first round, head kick to Wei Li Zhang. And then mm. the other title fight was Valentina Bullet Shevchenko and Jessica Andraj. The bullet just took care of this in the in the second round. Uh referee stoppage got her in a freaking crucifix and elbowed the living daylights out of her. <clears throat> what a great, what a great card. But the weird thing, homie. I sent you this uh, mm. just in case you didn't get it. But on one of the fights on the main card, lasted 17 seconds, Chris Weidman and Uriah Primetime Hall. Weidman went for a leg kick, a shin kick, and broke his damn shin. 
on his spot. own his oh, own his own shin yeah ah. broke his own shin dog it was nasty um yeah i'm done so, after that too oh that's Tap. brutal the funny thing not the funny thing but the the thing about that is is when chris weidman fought anderson silva uh a f- years back anderson silva did a kick to chris weidman and broke his shin as well so chris weidman was part of the fight where anderson silva silva broke his shin and then chris weidman breaks his shin on another fighter doing the same thing just nasty but man that card was awesome like i said uh mark Sudich, the usc guru and i uh, we'll bring you, we'll be back for the next USC 262 next month for y'all. So good stuff. Right. Good stuff. Man, I'm, starting got- to, I'm starting to recognize a couple of names out there, man. So not that I'm, I ain't keeping up with it like that, but at least I'm starting to find out who's hot, you know, who's a dog, but you know what? I, you, you mentioned something about the, about the, the, uh, the women a little bit earlier, you know, and how, how she uh, submitted the chick and, uh, I think that might be my start, man, because it looked like they're just like kind of like with WNBA. It seemed like they're a little bit more technical instead of just hardcore physicality all the time. And I think I might be able to ease into watching the uh, the women get down first because I don't think they really want to get punched in the face. A dude, he'll be swollen up and be smiling with three teeth left and the whole thing. But the girls, they be you know they they be trying to get their move on and you know I mean kick with the with the technical situation with whatever their uh, uh uh martial art forte is um and, and they get and they get after it so yeah i think i might start there hey you'll have to there's some free fights this weekend and next weekend tune in and check those out and i'll speak on me dude these girls don't mess around dog like i said they seem like it i'm telling you they they get they come out and they throw some haymakers they throw some bombs they ain't afraid to get bloody dog they ain't afraid to get they ain't afraid to get nasty. They ain't afraid to get in there and, and mix it up. So good stuff. So yeah, there's a couple of free fights the next couple of weekends. So tune into those um, on Saturday nights and uh, check them out. So um, man, I don't even know if I want to even talk. I, can, I, I can't even talk about my Mariners at this point. Um, you want to get right into baseball. Well, let's go. Yeah, let's get into some baseball. I mean, I, I, I just They've lost three in a row now. I think they scored like two runs average. I think they went three, two, and two. Now they're in Houston against a division foe, and they're getting wiped. Um, the only bright spot for our lineup is, is Hanniger, France, Seeger, top three. My guy Seeger doing big things. Um, he's on tear. He's like he's damn near hitting 500 in his last, you know, four or five games. But other than that, the offense is miserable. Uh, bitching, the pitch, <laughs> pitching, the pitching and the Actually, bullpen is, uh, isn't, isn't all that bad. Um, the, I mean, the, the bullpen is like number three in the league going into uh, the other day. And then they mm-hmm. held the, they held the Astros to only two runs or, uh, three runs the other day, I think. So bullpen's not necessarily ish, the issue that I thought it was going to be. So the bullpen's good. The starting pitchers started off a little rough. Bullpen mm-hmm. saved them. But when you're batting average, the entire lineup is hitting like 212 or whatever it is. We it's told you what was going to happen. Terrible. We told you that. You said you needed some power, and we so- don't got any. We don't got any power. We don't got any uh, just base hits in us right now. Ooh, man, like Aaron Barcott and you referenced as well. It's a long season, guys. It's a long season. I just hope they can turn it around a little bit and get back into it. But on another note, your Dodgers, homie. You haven't been able to talk about your Dodgers, homie. I haven't. So, look, the people. so two weeks ago, right when I got it, one of the first things that popped off in the sports week, aside from, you know, hope, hope y'all covered, uh, mentioned the boy Alex Smith and, you know, him saying peace and all that. But besides that, 
was the first series between the Dodgers and the Padres. We oh, only, yeah. at that point, we had three losses on the season, doing exactly what I told you was going to happen. And one of those okay. losses were to the uh, Mariners, by the way. One of the first three? No. Nah. Oh, no. Nah, they they got the four. After. Yeah, yeah, right after one, that. Right after that. Yeah. Okay, so they roll into town. And I'm like, yeah, this is what it's So we won two, two, two out of three games we win in the series, right? And guess what? I'm ready. I'm ready with my Christian Yelich. I'm ready with my Altuve. I'm ready with anybody who done got money that fell off rent. Okay, I'm ready because the kid Tatis goes one for 13 in the series. I'm hyped. For some reason, he can't even field. I'm hyped. I'm going, see, this is what y'all thought they were. I could have told you this. Yeah, another week later, we run it back. And we come down to earth because in, in between that, we played the Mariners. The Mariners stole one. Okay, we felt came back a little bit. Now we got now we got seven losses or what have you. And I'm like, okay, all right. Well, I mean, you can't go undefeated the whole year. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting there and I'm watching Tatis do his thing against Bauer out. You know what I'm saying? And I says, oh man, okay. This is just gonna be a fun year. We're gonna have to see what's gonna happen because we looking good. Okay. And uh, I'm surprised that Machado's not uh, yeah, is is not contributing as as much, especially where he is in the lineup um, with Tatis and Hosmer. Um, that I'm surprised about. But hey, San Diego pitching doing exactly. Snell held the Dodgers down. You know what exactly I mean? what I, they they brought him in to do, right? Exactly I, what they brought these guys in to do. Exactly, and and it was like, okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. But uh, oh, did you did you shout out uh your boy from the Mariners who held the Dodgers down, man? Did I miss that? Nope, did not. Oh I did. man, I'm surprised you didn't do that because uh, I watched every pitch of that damn game live. Was that Yuri, Marco? Urias, yeah. yeah. Marco and, finally uh, got broke out after his uh, 14 ERA to 8 ERA and held him down. They, but the, they were both the dealing. They were. And that was another thing about not to get off the subject real quick with the Dodgers, but the Mariners went 18 innings from that Dodger game on Monday or Tuesday to the Boston game on Thursday and had two hits through 18 innings or three. Yeah. Two hits through eight, three hits through 18 innings. And then when they came back in the, in the uh, extras, but anyways, Which is that's crazy. where it all downfall started when, when your boys shut them down. Yeah, man. So, like I said, I think the, the, the NL West is going to be real competitive once the season really gets charged up. Um, and, you know, you go around the you go around the league the first time um, and shout out to the A's, too, man. The, the A's is doing exactly what they always damn do, man. And I don't know why anybody's <laughs> ever, ever, ever damn surprised. OK, why would you be surprised that if, just because you don't know nobody on that team? They put that uniform on and that name crossed the front makes them fools. Man, they're just, they ready to go. They ready to go. It don't matter who name on the back. What they start one and six, one and seven, and then one uh, 13 in a row. Come Damn. on, man. Come yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, AOS is going to be tough for my, uh, my pick of the Mariners getting that, that AOS championship. They're going to have to start hitting the ball out of the freaking ballpark and hitting better than, than uh freaking 021 or whatever that they're doing right now because that shit's crazy. Yeah, but you better deal, deal with that boy show tiny man. Oh show hey baby hey at least at least we were in the running for about I don't know a day and a half before they decided that he he decided nah I ain't going to no Seattle Mariners. I'm gonna go to the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. That boy has he I think he was leading the league up until just the other day in home runs. He Seven was, home though. runs, and I mean the dude has like pit, the pitching is on point. He got mm-hmm. hurt in that one game, so he missed a couple starts yeah. or whatever, and then came back. And now he's just oh man, I'm glad they the need Mariners to roll him. Face him. They need to roll him like 
every 10 days. They don't put him in the, I mean, he could be in the rotation, but like every two weeks, like a payday. You know what I mean? Well, that's isn't that what Aaron, do it. that's what Aaron Barcott was talking about a little bit. I think right on that last pod we were talking before, uh, before you, you <laughs> stepped away. Uh, yeah. You know, he was like, oh, I only throw him this much. And then when we talked a couple of weeks ago, I talked to Aaron Barcott and I had a conversation about it. Uh, he was like, man, screw that. Just give him, give him the ball every five days and keep him in your lineup. I mean, if he got the Tommy John, though, you know how these dudes, some of these dudes come back Tommy John better, bro. Like, they, they he, really he do, though. He's a bionic little fucking arm at this point. <laughs> well, we'll you know? see, man, because you can't, you can't, I mean, with a, with a situation that they have in their lap with him and Trout, Man, I, I, not that I want to do all because I, you know me, I'm always a big fan of get your ass out there and give it everything you got. But that's a unique situation they got right there, and Very. And, and, and you don't want to Strasburg them or or nothing like that, man. You want to you want them to be able to reach full potential at on the mound because that's where it's going to help you most because the bat is just there. Right. He, he could he could not be able to throw again and still be able to swing that bat. But if he could reach his full potential, you know, what I'm saying on the mound, man, come on. What would that do for that area, for Orange County, for the Angels who never want seem to want to really be on the map? And then they can put them two trout and him side by side on a on a ESPN or TV promo. Come on. I mean, how do you, how do you not, the guy, the guy is, I wish I had his ERA and could pull his ERA up or whatever, but he, the guy is hitting, or the hell is his average? Three, 280. He's only hitting 286, but he has only 286. It's like the league average. Yeah, I know. Right. I say it like it's bad or whatever. This, uh, the league average, I to the league average, uh, right now is like two twelve or some bullshit like that. Most strikeouts, let least runs scored so far, uh, throughout the year in the first however many games they are. So everybody's like, you know, um, pitching is dominating. But then again, we talked about the pitching last year, how they're only going to have you know, 60 games. And then this Mm -hmm. year they're going to have to go the full 162 games and get those, who's going to get 20 or 30 starts or 20, I mean, 30, yeah, 30 starts or whatever and see Mm -hmm. what happens. So, um, but man, back to Otani. I mean, with that lineup that you have, you can't count on the, the ageless or the, the, the old man, Albert Pujols. No, but but they did get Rendon like we talked about as well. And you got Mm -hmm. Trout. Oh my gosh. I mean, they find a way. Um, so, so show Tony, which is that's what I call him. Don't worry about what his real name is. <laughs> show he, Tony. he leads, he leads the squad in case per nine with 15. So, Gee. so that's what I'm saying. And I mean, he's got a good, you know, decent ERA, three points, you know, you know, so I'm just saying, I mean, the more you put them out there, clearly the better production you're going to get. But I think at as, as some point, you know, I, I think that he should be on not a pitch count, but he should be on a full monitor like he's on house arrest. That's all I'm saying. Because, like I said, if you, if you can get a whole season of – Out of him into the playoffs. I, yeah, th- three quarters or two-thirds of – you know, some of these, some of these jokers or, you know, I mean, th- three quarters of what, you know, at his production level is still going to be better than a lot of these other cats. You know what I'm saying? And keep the bat in the lineup, man. Come on. That's special. Yeah. The dead dude is just unreal. Oh man. I would, I was looking at the, I did this last week too. I was looking at the home run totals for the week or for the year. And mm. last week we were talking, I think it was uh six, seven might've been the, uh, the leader. Cause it updated in the middle. And that was uh Sunday ago, not last Sunday, but the Sunday before, 
But uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. still on top with eight. Mm-hmm. And then Ryan McMahon from Colorado, Reese Hawkins for Philly. So I'm looking yeah. at all these these top these top t- 19, 20, and they are pretty productive players, and they all fairly have the worst batting average on that is like 259. So even though they're still hitting for power, they still have some batting average going on, you know, mm-hmm. getting their pitches and still going. So. It's still well, April, you, though, bro. It's I still know. April. Yep. And then when you get into the playoffs, like you were talking, referencing to Hotani, you know, what's going to win you – what's going to win in the playoffs, as we referenced to before? Pitching, right? Oh. Uh, pitching is going to be the dominant force. So they just have to – they have to get, you know um, – I forgot what I was saying. Get to the get, – get through the long season and see how it ends up in the playoffs mm-hmm. and I still stand behind my statement. Mariners will be AOS champions. They're going to figure it out. They have to, it's only April. It's a long season. You're absolutely right. They do have to. <laughs> they figure do have something to. Damn <laughs> I knew it. Set myself up for that one. Right. Uh, oh shit, homie. I know what I wanted. I know what I wanted to get your perspective on homie is. Okay. I feel we're going to have a difference of opinion on this, and that's why I want to ask you this question off, off, uh, uh, on the spot, throwing you out mm-hmm. there, throwing you under the bus. Go on. Madison Bumgarner threw a seven-inning no-hitter uh, the other day, right? And because the doubleheader, mm-hmm. they do the seven and seven, right? Which MLB mm-hmm. decided that's how they're going to go. Right. I believe – if the ML, first of all, I don't want to change any of the rules as we discussed all this extra runner on second base and a digital strike zone and all that bullshit. No, nobody right. wants to see, nobody wants that, right? That's too crazy. However, if you're going to have, if you're going to make a game seven innings, he's not going to go down as, as a no hitter in the record books, quote unquote. It's going to go down as a, 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 a achievable up. accomplishment or whatever. A notable accomplishment is what it's called. Mm. So my opinion is, hey, you idiots wanted to change the fucking rules. He gets a he gets a he gets a no hitter. What are your thoughts, homie? Dude, I'm dead with you on that. Oh, the one, the wow. One, yeah, no, no, no. The one question I have to ask you and ask anybody who wants to argue the point down is, was it a complete game? It was a complete game. Well, then everybody That's, can kiss my ass, dude. Yeah, I gonna, feel you. I'm on the same page. I really thought we were going to differ on that. So if so, if I got a if I'm if, if if I'm dealing in the eighth, and all of a sudden it's a rain delay, and they they call the game, you gonna tell me that I ain't have I ain't have a no here? I ain't have a no no now. All of a sudden, I ain't get the opportunity. The game they called the game. The game is complete. You can kiss my ass, man. That's right. You put it. I'll, I'm gonna make sure I know. Everybody knows I got that no hitter. It's just. It's just. That's real. They were. Uh, they were. Uh, MLB decided that it wasn't technically a no hitter in the record books or whatever. Blah 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 blah. But it's gonna go down as an achievable accomplishment, a notable accomplishment, or whatever. With a, I guess, an asterisk sort of type thing. Hey, you know what? Did the Dodgers get an asterisk last year for their championship? That's what I'm saying, man. Look, the the shortest complete game is women and softball. They go what? Set. That's a game, man. It wasn't yep. like it was, you know, I mean, uh, six and what have you or five and two thirds or whatever. And it's a rain delay situation. And all of a sudden it just barely hit the cutoff for being an official game. And then, yeah, you know, I, that I could see because that's arguable. The game was set up for seven because it's a double header. I went out there and did my thing. Y'all better mark it up right damn now, or I'm kicking up a gang of dust, man. Oh, your players union, something. I don't know. I don't know what what kind of stuff Bumgarner has at his disposal, except for social media complaining and whatnot. But uh, yo, I would be hot, G. I'd be like, yo, yep. Anytime somebody talked about the number of no-nos done in the year. Uh, you better put my damn picture up. 
Or put Better my put, damn, put my highlights up. Put them, put them in the books, brother. Put them in the books. Um, See, I'll be every every damn uh, interview I did. I'd be like, yeah, y'all know about that. No, I don't know what I do, do last week. Yeah, that was hard, wasn't it? Okay, but next question. Every time, <laughs> every time out, I'd be like, uh, I'd be like a a beast mode. You know what I'm saying? I'm just here so I don't get fined. I'll be talking about them every damn thing. It'd be, you'd hear that shit more than you heard Russell Wilson go off, man. I'm trying to tell you. I would be talking. I would get on the MLB damn nerves with that. That's, that's all I would say. Because, yeah, you have to recognize this. I don't know about none of this achievement. Being able to get out there, you know what I mean, and win a game is a notable achievement, damn it. Exactly. No. And mm-hmm. who and who who even throws seven innings anymore? A five inning is damn near a close, you know, a quality start these days instead of seven, for goodness sakes. What the Enough damn, damn hell? said. Enough damn said. That alone hey. right there. That's my shit right there. I've been telling you, you go go seven nowadays. You're, you're a damn marvel. <laughs> Kiss my ass. Ain't no shit about that. Hey. We're going to take a quick little uh, uh, commercial break for y'all, and we'll be back in a second. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Go to thisfunner.com for more podcasts and online content. Mm-hmm. Grab some freaking merch from the Funner family while you're there. Wear your damn mask. Got to do wash it. Your, wash your damn hands, right, at Moss Big Homie? You got to do that. Wash them shits with soap and hand sanitizer. <laughs> Wash them with soap. Hey, could have said it better myself. I right, thanks for listening. We'll be back in a minute. You're listening to your weekly sports fix with sticks. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, over prohibited by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Now back to your weekly sports fix with Sticks. What's up, y'all? We're back. And if you missed the first half of the episode, I found the Nas Big Homie. Not roaming the streets of Federal Way, but he's back in the house. Good to have you back. Yo, yes, up in here. Ready to kick that good sports game. Hey, man, it's been a minute, you know, getting back into it. Man, there's so much going on, dog, and we just don't have enough time to hit it all. We're going to figure out a way. We're going to figure it out a way to get to get get through all of it. You know, we have the Olympics coming up in 86 days, homie. Can you believe that? 86 days the Olympics are going to be here. How the fuck is that even going to go down, dude? I, I don't know. That's going to be interesting. It's going to be like MLB. It still, might not. It still it, might not. I mean, I know. What's to say that it is? I can't believe that they still at this when, okay, yeah, maybe you got, uh, you know, the, the developed countries might be on top of it, but it seems like some of them is, like, struggling hard. I ain't talking about the little Ricky Dean countries who, who who can't get nobody vaccinated and got stuff going crazy like Brazil, who's always a pretty major factor in the Olympics, especially the right. Summer Olympics. They got issues. 
And Indy, I mean, I don't know if they got athletes out there anyway, except for them uh, goat chasing or mule herding or whatever. But um, they got issues. And, uh, you know, all the African nations, yeah, for track and field, I mean, I, yeah, you could test people twice, three, four, five times a day. But I'm talking about are you going to be able to field athletes enough I, man, I don't even know. What does the Olympic I, Village look like, man? I, I was just going to say, bro. If, even if the Olympic Village is a damn bubble, right? You already have the freaking wang wings winging out everywhere. The little peepees, the, 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 the chicks and the, and the dudes having their own little get-togethers in this mm-hmm. Olympic Village. We've all heard the stories about that. You got, mm-hmm. you know, all these countries and nations hanging out. And new and, and, and unlimited condoms, as we heard about before. Yeah, before they were just worried about but now, VD. Yeah, now what are you going to worry about? How in the hell do you, uh, once one person gets it in the village, I mean. Especially those sports that have, like, multiple rounds. Yeah, yeah. man. Woo. It's going to be interesting, though. I mean, it's going to make for a whole lot of, you know what I'm saying, shit talk for me. If it don't go right, you already know who to call. Who got to we're, gonna, we're gonna have plenty of content for that, you know. <laughs> plenty of content coming your way for the Olympics, that's for sure. That's gonna be a daily, some kind of daily bullshit you're gonna be able to for to sure spew, right? I mean, yeah. holy smokes, bro. That's nuts. Hey, well, on a lighter note, a better note, dog. An Oz big homie. Do you remember mm-hmm. our Kentucky Derby bet last year that we told all the people about? Hell yeah. We made sure that, you know, we had it on lock. We knew we we're talking about Kentucky Derby is the first May or first Saturday in May every year. Mm-hmm. Last year, they didn't have any fans there. This year, this Saturday, they're going to have the Kentucky Derby. They're going to have 20,000 people there, not 100,000 or 150,000 like yeah, they used to cool. have. Yeah. They're going to have people there. They're going to have the, the hats and the good drinks out. Yeah. Yeah. And having a good time. And that money and that money out there, too, those, those big dollar bills will be floating. Last year, ABA, ABH and I, a nice big homie, and I went with maximum security. However, maximum hit. security was disqualified. Man, fuck all that. He hit. He won. He hit and got disqualified, and Country House took the win. Bro, the that was the wildest shit I ever seen. They had a fucking replay in the Kentucky Derby. They had a, they, a what the hell is the thing called? A Sky Judge re- reviewing <laughs> this. I'm going to tell you. Hey, there you go. And that's and that's the thing. Now I'm looking at the the field this year, you know, and that name just called out to me right off the rip. Now this year, which one? Which one? No, no, no. I'm saying last. Oh, year, that name last year. Yeah, last yeah. Last year it was like, yeah, that's it. That's it by far, by far. Now it was I'm, like eight I'm, to one, eight to one or something. I think it wasn't like high odds, but it was like eight to one, six to one, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And um, oh man, I don't know, man. Uh, 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 let me let me just run let me just run <laughs> through a couple let me run night. through a couple real quick yes. let me run through a couple so yes. the favorite is essentially quality starting out of the 14th post two to one and then you have followed by uh rock your world five to one at the 15th mm. post and known agenda six to one out of the one post no one's won from the one post in like uh i want to say 14, 15 years, 16 years, 80 something. I'll look it up. I'll get back to you on that one. Um, and then you also have the eight to one hot rod Charlie starting out a nine post. So those are the only four single digit odds that you have. Yeah, nobody care about them, man. Come on. You you know you gotta call out the one. It's only one. Number 10. Me. It's only one, and that's me. Okay. All time, any time of day, midnight bourbon. I love it. I love it. Was, it. It was either going to be the midnight bourbon, or what comes after the midnight bourbon after you've had a couple? Damn super sandwich. Okay. That super sandwich <laughs> super goes. Sandwich. Super sandwich goes. But 
hey, hey, right now, the paper has got to be placed, and I'm going to smile, too. There's a couple other ones, man. I ain't going to do no kind of research, neither. Either. I'm going to tell you right down now. Uh, but uh, uh, where's the other one? I say I, I highly motivated. Okay. I, I love these names, bro. You know, yeah. Highly motivated. I can get down with that because I'm highly motivated. The- to drink midnight bourbon and be yeah. hungry after that and need a super sandwich. In that order, we in place the show right now. Uh, I like you can't you can't count out the bourbonic, the bourbonic, bourbonic though. Bourbonic at the, the 20 post, 30 to 1, has a little mm. bourbon in it. Has a little, 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 little in something it. in it. A little something in it. A little something in it. I'm gonna roll with the uh, the 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 rocker world from the 15 post for okay. obvious reasons five to one. Definitely, okay. definitely rolling with your midnight bourbon. That's that's a lock right there. Uh, Twenty that's to it. one. You can't go you can't go wrong with that. Um, so wow, what a field. We'll see how that goes on Saturday afternoon. It should be fired up. People are gonna having some fun. Someday we'll be there, announced big homie. We definitely need to get that Kentucky Derby, though. Hit the 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 the, uh, the uh, Emerald Downs just doesn't cut it sometimes, but Emerald Downs, no. Emerald no. Downs is the shit too, though. Emerald yeah, Downs no, down here and the to tack. That damn that damn uh, Kentucky show would be. That's like one of those sporting. It's actually in Auburn, right? sorry, but yeah. Yeah, there you go. I'll I'll give you a pass uh, on that. Yeah, I know. Uh, but. Uh, uh, yeah, no, Kentucky Derby. That's one of those events, though. Like uh, that, yeah. You know, I mean, you got you want to be in the house one good time with with your, you know, your boostiest suit on. You know, what I mean, looking extra extra fly. You know, for no apparent reason, with a suit that you can only wear that one time. It's the lightest color suit. It's white or baby blue or something crazy. Looking extra fresh. Drinking bougie ass drinks. Yeah, that's one of the things that you got to do one time in your life. Man, I've got to make that happen. I feel it. That'd be that'd be some fun, some fun for sure. You know what's tomorrow, or yeah, tomorrow, mm-hmm. maybe maybe today if you get to listen to this on uh, Thursday, we got the NFL draft. Let's just start it off by saying Trey Lance, yeah, Mac yeah, yeah. Jones, Mac, you know, Mac Jones, your boy, your boy Zach Wilson. I got it right this time, Zach yeah. Wilson. I am. I, I I can't screw it up all the time, so. You know, but the, we we've referenced this before in the past too, homie. Is you know what what kind of what kind of shenanigans are we going to see in these draft rooms? I guess they're going to have they're actually going to have most of the draft picks there, so yeah, you won't be having them at home. But you're right. not going to maybe maybe you won't be able to see uh, CD Lamb on the map. I want some money right off rip that I'm going to put y'all on. National TV, right damn now, I guarantee you. So, did you see how they have it worked out in Cleveland? Did you see how they got it worked Not out? Not like, the whole like, thing yet, yeah. Okay, so, Pete, i seen this either uh, – that's how yesterday first, but then today they had one of the little reporters, I think it might have been a Didi Kickball or somebody, walking through. So, basically, they have it set up like office space. Everybody's got an oversized cubicle with couches and whatnot, big monitors, tables. So it's like everybody has like an individual party scene going on. It's almost like last year, like everybody was at home, except for everybody, instead of having the little, you know, banquet tables like they have normally and everybody's all open air crowded together, everybody's got basically like their own little green room party area. Ah, gotcha, yeah. So... You might get some of that shit we was talking we saw last year because you still gonna have you still gonna have a girl, the girl who don't know she the girl, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, and, uh, who thinks the, uh, who thinks she's the girl, the mama who don't like the girl. You might still have all of that popping off because the room looked like it was a decent sized room. It was like it wasn't like they tried to do it. And just give everybody a little, you know, like the little circular table. And, you know, I mean, your mama, your yeah. daddy, your girl and your homeboy brothers and whatnot is all there. Agent, no, right. this is like a space. You know what I mean? And like I said, they had monitors up on the wall. 
multiple couches, tables with, you know, uh, uh, refreshments and whatnot. So it looked like it might come off okay. The only thing that I was concerned with when I saw it was, where the hell are they going after they exit the room? Wait till you see it, man. If, if you get on a, a NFL network at some point, man, because uh, yeah. they'll probably be replanted over and over because they ain't got nothing else to play at this point leading up to tomorrow, but um, is how they going to – what's their route looking like? Cause it was like a huge warehouse. It seemed like, or a large building or a floor of a building. And they had like every, it was like, boom, Zach, Mag, Yeah. You know I mean, the Trevor. Uh-huh. And he's just like room. Damn. And she was but they like, got like, and she like peep in. people in there. Yeah. She's just like peep in cameraman. Yeah. You know I mean, give you like a full kind of uh, idea of the room. And it looked like, yeah, it looked like a decent sized room, man. It looked like a 20 by 10 room. I mean, at least a 20 by 10 room. And uh, I don't know, man. It, 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 you might get all of that because everybody's got their own. You got a little privacy up in there. You know what yeah, mean? got, you got their little, own set up. And- yeah, you got a little privacy. Everybody could, you know what I mean? Maybe, uh, maybe unmask, maybe stay masked. I don't know how they're going to do it since you got everybody separate. Um, but the, the only thing, like I said, uh, was the uh, – was after after the card comes out and the announcements made uh, that travel like what is that gonna look like because it looked kind of weird it literally looked like cubicles in the office so except huh. for oversized so but check it out man i'll be interested to see what you know i mean once we start the, the the group chat probably first thing in the afternoon tomorrow uh what everybody's thinking but yeah i definitely think it's gonna be some shenanigans uh somebody gonna have the uh product placement popping if they smart if they got a good agent you know what i mean shout out to drew rosenhouse and all the big ballers out there um and jerry Maguire. you know <laughs> <laughs> jerry Maguire. You, got, you gotta you gotta give a shout out to jerry Maguire, man he put it he put it on the map with rod tidwell man uh that's right but um but uh but yeah man so uh i'm sure we'll get started real early man it's gonna be plenty of shenanigans um yeah i'm sure you saw today you know, offline, not necessarily draft related, but it could be draft related because nobody know what the Broncos were going to do. Broncos acquired Teddy Bridgewater today to oh, put, a yeah. little, put a little fire up under Drew Locke. And I was, all, I'm a proponent of giving Drew Locke another shot, man. But now he ain't got no damn choice. Now he better, now he better go get a shot and, and you know what I'm saying? And try to give a shot because uh, uh, Teddy's coming, man. And people like him. Yeah, I mean, coaches and shit like him. So, you know, uh, he'll be he'll be ready. Yeah, I don't understand how. Well, obviously, maybe it's just mind games or whatever. The Broncos are still shout out to Aaron Jones and his Broncos or whatever. Um, sure. Still looking for the quarterback situation. I mean, this dude, Teddy Bridgewater, could have very well stayed in uh, New Orleans. Right. Mm-hmm. He's a better quarterback than Taysom Hill. Not as functional, better quarterback than Taysom Hill. Went to is he Carolina. better than your boy? Is he better than your boy, though? Who's saying? Come on now. Jameis, Jameis Winston? Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, yes. Be real, though. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I'll say. Yes. Yeah, be real, man. <laughs> yes, from what yes. we know. From what we from know. From what we've seen. And this yeah. guy just keeps getting passed around and passed around. Yeah. I mean, Minnesota, he had that. We talked about this last year. His, you know, his injury in Minnesota with Teddy B. Teddy B. Uh, mm-hmm. Now he go. you know, he gets – he got – Carolina signed him to be the fall guy, bro. They made, you know, yeah. didn't have nobody around him, you know, nothing to make. He had McCaffrey, right? Well, they, but, didn't, know he, they didn't know he was going to get hurt, but I can't remember. Did that new Carolina staff acquire Bridgewater or did they acquire Bridgewater first and then the new staff came? In? I can't remember. That's a but, good question. I wonder yeah, if they got him first. But you know, I with think the, that that's it. The new. I mean, now with the 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 coach there, it's a uh, uh, rule, right, Matt? Rule? Right, right, right. So you know, he you know he just came from college a year and a, two years ago. So now mm-hmm. this is his second year in the NFL. You know, he's definitely wants one of those college kids because you know he's been around the college game a while. So maybe you know they they're gonna move up and and get a quarterback somehow or whatever pick they are. But Teddy B, back to Teddy B. This dude never gets a chance. I mean. Uh, maybe in Denver, it, he's definitely going to push Drew Locke. And I hope he – I would think just off paper that – he and work ethic that Teddy B has that he's going to be the starter uh, in, in Denver. I uh, know. That's cold, man. Because like I said, I, I was a big proponent of giving Drew Locke another shot. 
after because his whole defense was shattered, which was which is what the Broncos, yeah, I mean, got to the Super Bowl off of with a dead, a half dead Peyton Manning. Yeah, I mean, Vaughn <laughs> Va, Vaughn was having his problems, plus he was hurt. You know, so now you get to, now you get your defensive guys back in the mix, and you can build. You, but matter of fact, forget the defense. They didn't even have Cortland Sutton all the year last year, neither. So now you got Judy established, Sutton back, uh, uh, Melvin Gordon another year in the system. They could have some if he just played, if he just put some play on the field and, and, and managed the squad. And if he showed his ass, then that's – Shit, they could win it. Well, I don't know about winning the division with KC, but I mean, they could kick up some dust. You know what I mean? They could be respectable, and at least he could be out there because he seemed like a dude who like who's one of those dudes who like wants to be like an Aaron Rodgers dog type of dude. Now I don't know if he's got it in him, but he seems like he's one of those guys. You Drew know Locke, what I mean? Right? Yeah, Drew Lock. Yeah, he seems like one of those guys. Like yeah, you know I mean, he wants to get after it. So I was like, hey, let him get after it then. Let's see. And uh, clearly they don't want to see or they want to see by by pressure. And ain't nothing wrong with that neither, because now if he wins the job straight out, everybody got to shut his mouth. But I don't think he is now. That's the problem. I think that was the move. They just made the move that says we're moving on. And it's sad, man, because he didn't even get out his four years. So now. I mean, he's gonna end up one of them cats that just that's just gonna float around. It, it and speaking of quarterbacks, you know, there's like five quarterbacks, right? You got, you know, like we started out, Justin Fields from Ohio mm-hmm. State, Trey Lance, um, Mac, Mac Jones, Zach. Zach Wilson, and then Star. obviously Trevor Lawrence, right? Do all mm-hmm. five quarterbacks go in the fucking first top 10? That's got to be an insane number. I mean, I don't remember the last – I mean, I'm probably wrong, of course. I don't have, mm. you know, all the references in front of me that I can pull up, but that's crazy. I mean, the only team – what, Atlanta picks four off the top of my head. I don't have it in front of me because I'm mm. bad or whatever. Uh, you know, they don't need a quarterback. Okay, round two. Name something that's not – boring a laundry oh a book club computer solitaire huh ah oh, sorry we were looking for chumba casino that's right chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes chumbacasino.com no purchase necessary forward prohibited by law 18 plus terms and conditions apply see website for details yeah they're the only one they're the they're the first one who don't and need that doesn't a right in the yeah right. in the top four? I mean, geez, do, do the Patriots move up and get a quarterback? I mean, they they really count on Cam from what I've seen. Carolina just got rid of Teddy B. I mean, so peep this wow. out. So remember what the carousel looked like last year, because everybody was waiting to see what Tom Brady was going to do. Yeah, I mean, if you remember what the carousel looked like last year. It was crazy. Everybody, nobody knew what the what the Colts were going to do. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it was a. Uh, uh, I think the Teddy Bridgewater was still, you know, out there at that time. Yep, that yeah, um, it was. It was. Uh, where was Cam Newton going to go? Um, and all of this, and then you still had the the draft and, and whatnot. With you know, there, nobody knew what Justin Herbert. At least I did. I don't know about everybody else, but. You know, and, and these guys and how they turned out to be in that, that carousel was real big, but they were, everybody's waiting for that Tom Brady kind of domino to drop. So now you fast forward to this year, I think it's kind of like a part two of that because everybody after that Tom Brady shoe drop, everybody just grabbed anybody. Yeah, for real. You know, I think the only team that legitimately was like thoughtful about what they were going to do, even though they probably thought in their head that what could happen eventually happened was the Phillip Rivers situation. Indianapolis went in there and says, okay, we'll take the guy. Hopefully we can get him to stick for more than one year, but probably not. And then that, and, and then, you know, what, what had happened there ended up happening. They ended up being lucky enough to get a, a semi-established quarterback after, after that. But it's that carousel that last end of that carousel. Look at all them teams who was on that carousel last year. They back at it again. 
it's the same teens that was on that carousel, except for this time, some of them is at the top of the draft. So here we go. And here we go again. So now Bridgewater established. Well, no, no, no. Let's start from the beginning. Carson Wentz, number one. Boom. Uh, Cam Newton ends up staying. I don't know how that's going to work out. It, it still might play out for this year. See, that could be another one that still could play out for this year. Belichick makes moves or if somebody drops or they're, I've been hearing that they might try to get up to eight, you know what I mean, and, and, and grab a guy, you know, Lancer Fields. Who knows what happens there? You know, but like I said, I think the only but only team, and it's sad, man. I, I hate that the star, man, is going to end up playing for the Jets, man. That's cold blood. I would almost rather, I mean, it'd be cool if he even played for the Jaguars. And, you know, at least the Jaguars are known for something. But, I mean, I, I, I don't know that the Utah swag going to New, New York and have to deal with the media and all of that. But, uh, but he's going to be the star. Trust me. Yeah. I, uh, you, you've called it and you're backing it. Are you going to be a Jets fan now, too? You know, I'm gonna keep my eyes on him, just like uh, the, the like I said, the same thing about Justin Herbert. I was like, okay, and then he goes to the Chargers. Now, how I'm gonna pay, pay you know, what I mean, keep a heavy eye that, on the Chargers. We hate the Chargers, <laughs> right, you know what? Right. But I'll keep my eyes on him, and, and look what he did. So, you know, I, and I think he has an opportunity to do that, especially. I, I mean, I don't know about first year because you have a, a HC who is a defensive-minded guy, I don't know who the Jets have at OC. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know if he's, uh, you know, an established name. We'll get to that. You know I mean? We'll get to the facts later after the team start, you know, materializing and stuff like that. But um, if you can get him a de- get him some, uh, you know, a game plan to play behind, because, yeah, I'm, I, hey, in that middle tier, I fuck with Sam Darnold too. He gonna be they, all right too. They Watch. made they yep they made a lot of uh, they made a lot of moves so we'll see. Hey, an honest big homie, check this out, dog. I just pulled up. I found our draft talk from last year, homie. I forgot about some of this stuff. You got? Oh, to, I got some of it too. Go ahead. People are gonna have to go back and listen to this back in uh, uh, April draft talk last year. Uh, go ahead. Episode 34, uh, J- Javon Kinlaw, a draft from the, the 49ers. Yeah. It, 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 the Holy Ghost, dog. <laughs> his the pop. Holy Ghost spirit. His pops got it. Yes, sir. Fell out the chair. Uh, <laughs> what else? Uh, you can't forget uh, about your boy Isaiah Wilson, man. Hey, oh, hey. yeah. His mama was a star. Oh, and now, yeah. Man, and now look what his situation is. He's going to be on two teams in the big top. Yeah, and he's done already. I think he already got cut again from Miami. Yes, sir. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, so uh, you got about the, uh, the the episode because it was because this was a Zoom situation. Coach's Cribs, Vrabel. I- Vrabel's sons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you all in the in the With background. The, uh, uh, the damn, uh, uh, Power Rangers. Power yeah. Rangers. Yeah, and the miscellaneous deuce. Did it happen? <laughs> or yep. was it or was it smoking It was Photoshop smoking mirrors, baby. Uh that dude uh Mac- Mac- Malachi Beckton, his dad was a freaking monster. Uh yeah. some things to look some things to look forward to for the draft, dude. We talked about rugs. Um uh, Aaron Rodgers got farved again. Aaron Rod- Aaron Rodgers got farved <laughs> by them picking a, yeah. a quarterback. Oh, and yeah. Aaron Rodgers still has Bob. Hey, you were talking about cribs though. Yes, sir. And the flex. The Cliff, big Cliff flex. Kingsbury. Big flex. Big flex, dog. Big white flex. white collar shirt with no socks, boy. With the fl- with the eternal flame in the background. You forgot all about the eternal flame in the background. Oh yeah, the, the open Yo. doors. Come, man, living, come on, man. Living How the many- best life in Arizona, bro. His DMs was off the chain after that. <laughs> it was it was it was news anchor chicks. It was every damn uh, sideline reporters. Everything was trying to get at him after that boy. He put it out there. 
now that I just, I, I, I knew we were, I knew I was missing something or what I was thinking about. I was like, there had to be more than what we started with. And I was like, oh shit, I got to find this. I found it. Finally found it. It only took me the whole show to get it, but dude, that's, that's gonna, right. the, 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 the draft is always, a, now I don't want to say a spectacle, but it is even though, though the, it, even though the Seahawks don't have a draft pick, because you already know what they're going to do if they did have a first round draft pick, they'd trade it away anyways. Mm-hmm. But all the, 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 the things that happen at these are just, it, it's, it's entertainment TV for, it's like watching the WW fucking E, bro. That's what it is. This is a, uh, a, uh, a uh, real housewives for dudes. Okay. The, it's the storylines. All the pomp and circumstance, um, you know what I mean? The the possibilities, you know what I mean? And the and, and see, like the last year, and I think I remember saying something like, uh, uh, if you go back and listen to it, Aaron Rodgers is pissed because Jordan Love didn't even have to sit in there and look like an asshole like he did while they was while while he was getting yeah uh while he got Rogers and had to sit up there with the camera in his face. And even that that happened twice to the same franchise. You know what I mean? right That's crazy. And then you see what he ended up doing after that, like like fuck this young boy. I'm gonna go out and put up numbers I ain't put up in Whew. some of them never. Aaron you know Rodgers so, G bro. Yeah, man. So he 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 uh, he's a shit ass Jeopardy host for the record. If anybody yeah. wanted to know the Wait, you opinion, what? he's a shit ass Jeopardy host. If anybody wants to know the homie opinion on his performance on Jeopardy, since shit I'm a Jeopardy dude, dude, come on, man. Dude, he was good. No, 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 no. He okay. So you know how when he goes on McAfee. Okay, yeah. and, and he's like real smooth, but he like you know, man. He he cuts in. And that's kind of his personality. He didn't give us that on Jeopardy. He didn't give us that on Jeopardy. It looked like he was trying to be a host. And you can't. Well, mess what the up hell this. is he supposed to do, bro? Yeah, He's fucking hosting no, the show. I know that. I know, but that's what I'm saying. You can't fuck up the sanctity of Jeopardy because it's not right. about the host at all, period. It's about the game, number one. So you all you almost have to be just like uh you gotta be like, dude. You know who really surprised me? We're gonna swing on some Jeopardy shit real quick. No, damn, good. Go, damn, Doctor Oz. That shit was a surprise to me because he is he is real Trebek like, and the person who I think that they should really get a shit to is damn Anderson Cooper. It's just natural to him because he's all he's a damn news guy. See, so, so you're saying that Aaron Rodgers brought too much spunk to Jeopardy? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. It was too stiff. It, it, it was, it was, it looked rehearsed almost. It didn't look natural. The only thing that I thought was cool, did you see that clip after the, after his first show at the very end when the dude uh, didn't know the answer, but he put what is, you should have went for the field goal? Yeah. Yep. Or who, okay. who, 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 who wanted to go for the field goal or something or shouldn't have gone. Yeah. Yeah. Now, at first, I'm watching the end of the show, watching the credits roll. I didn't see it. Now, when I see the clip come after and I hear his banter with the, with them, I go, okay, all right, this is just his first show. Okay, I'll give it to him. Maybe it's coming. It just didn't come. It, it, it was a little bit too stiff. And I think Jeopardy has an issue with, uh, I think, maybe the, the, uh, the earpiece or something. There's like a little lag between them giving the answer and him saying, is it correct or not? Because sometimes I felt like they were making Rodgers look stupid because maybe there was like a second or and a half or something like that delay in between to where it was like Rodgers didn't even know if the answer was right or not. And I think on a couple of the people like Dr. Roz and uh, 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 Katie Couric, it was just like bang, 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 bang. And I was like, that's like Alex shit. Why? I mean, like, does he know the answer? Does he got the card? Or are they trying to make them look stupid? I don't know. I can go on some Jeopardy shit for a minute, but <laughs> I'm just saying he he's he's a stand up guy for doing it. I bet you he probably even goes back because I'm sure he took takes it just like he takes the game practice the game plan. And yep. Yeah, I'm pretty 100. sure because I heard all kinds of stories about how he was like 
like like doing reviewing tape like it was like like tape room stuff yeah like like he was ready to go get on the field dog yeah 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 so i i know but i think in some ways i'm pretty sure in in some ways he's a little disappointed in how it turned out i'm pretty i'm definitely sure he's disappointed in what uh some of the feedback was see i haven't heard anything negative of course because of everything i listen to or watch is obviously well it seems like it's all positive about a rod aaron Rodgers in the in jeopardy i did see a couple clips i haven't got a chance i didn't get a chance to review the whole show because i don't get home in time mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. but everything i've heard and i've said this before when we talked uh, aaron Rodgers on the football field love him as an athlete aaron Rodgers yeah. is a competitor love him as an athlete you know as a competitor yes, sir before I started watching him when he was making his clips on the Pat McAfee show that I wasn't really sure of this guy, but he seems like a real down to earth dude, decent human being or real good human being. And he just takes it. So, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, that's like, you know, us, you know, doing this podcast, we're taking it, you know, as serious as we can, we have time, but dude, this is watching film. I haven't yeah. heard any bad, real bad things. I didn't see any bad clips. I didn't see any bad uh, takes on it. It seems like everybody likes him. But, however, is that because he's an athlete and how he's built his brand over the years? Because he did say bad things about, you know, I don't, let me rephrase that. Didn't say bad things about Jordan Love, but he wasn't in love with Jordan Love coming to exactly. the team. Exactly. And, that, and that's exactly him, though. And I think he was true to his personality, but you're talking to somebody who, who's been watching this shit for 20 years, you know what I mean? So, and then when you have, you know, celebrity hosts and stuff like this, of course, everybody is going to be held to the standard of Alex Trebek and how smooth he was. Right. Right. But I mean, look at how many years he did it to get smooth. I didn't see plenty of interviews from him saying shit in the beginning. I didn't know what the hell I was doing neither. and was still trying to get footing. So, I mean, anybody who steps in to take those shoes, um, especially who that is not their thing. And you got to remember, uh, Aaron Rodgers is not even a media guy. Right. Yeah. These guys right. get a microphone shoved in their face when they don't want to half the time or when maybe they don't have anything to say. You know what I mean? Or shit, I don't have nothing positive to say. I just want to rip my teammates and rip my coach or whatever. And I, and I have to sit up there and not. So that's why I think his personality, like when he goes on McAfee, you get to see a little bit of him, but he still don't give it to you. It's just like, I'll give it to you my my way. Right. It's his way, but he's definitely giving you the real. That's what I respect about him. Let me ask you this. Let's close it out with this since we got to get out of here. Let's go. Uh, Are they going to come up with a Jeopardy actual host soon? or And who is your take? Who who are they going to come up with? Oh man, man, me and the wife talk about this all the time. Because every time somebody else pop up, we're like, do that person have it? Yes or no? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yes, it's gonna be somebody, uh, and they're gonna come up with somebody. Uh, word on the street is the the greatest uh, champion of all time is in the lead, no matter what. Ken Jennings. Okay, right. the, no, no matter what, he's on the staff now. Makes already, sense already, and I think he just did the Chase show as like a, a warm up kind of situation which yeah i wasn't a big fan of that it was a good concept but they could have did it better but um anderson cooper if he wants to do it amongst all the other thousand jobs he got he could do it and i think the sleeper is dr Roz. now i did hear that apparently smart guys and former jeopardy winners don't like dr oz medical theories and how he thinks from medical shit so they've already been talking shit on facebook or something like that or whatever people talk talk shit nowadays um about uh and being anti dr ross but katie curry did pretty good too but as far as like the actual host ken jennings i think is still in the lead and if they really wanted to make it smooth and if anderson cooper got time to do it that would be a good go to and i wouldn't be mad at that Good insight on Jeopardy, Mr. Uh, Anas Big Homie, Jeopardy edition right there yes, for sir. the last few minutes. 
Hey, come on. We close it. We close this out. I do have some breaking news for you all. Let's Hopefully, go. y'all made it all the way to the end. John Snyder says he, quote unquote, never actively negotiated, end quote, with any team about Russell Wilson trade. Motherfucker wasn't going nowhere this year. So, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Go to thisfunder.com for more podcasts and online content. Grab some merch while, while you're there from the Funner family. Follow mm-hmm. me on Twitter at Sticks015. Use the hashtag Sticks to Sports. Follow Nas Big Homie on Twitter at homie underscore anonymous. He's back mm-hmm. in the house. He's healthy. He's fired up. He's ready to go. He's <clears throat> ready to make the damn thing happen. He's going to be back on Twitter again now that he can pick up his damn phone. Let's go, brother. What you got? Yo, like I said, man, hey, I want to congratulate the boy Alex Smith on a, on a great career, man, and all of his stuff that he had to do, man, to even get back on the field, man. If you've seen that uh, that documentary uh, ESPN did, man, is it's insightful, man, and, and motivating. But Alex, go get you one of these good sports media jobs. You know why? Damn, this is fun. That was Sports Fix with Sticks. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. If you want to join the show, use the hashtag Sticks and Sports.